Starting defense. Place at the table. Woo! Looks like Joe's coming around. He should be ready for Saturday. Place at the table. Yeah! Yeah! I think we ought to tell Coach. Hell no, you don't want to know about this. Yeah. Make sure you tell Latimer that the NCAA will be testing on Saturday. Yeah, baby! Starting defense! Woo! If steroids can make you that excited about something, then I feel like it's something that... I would like to try sometime. Like it, it, you know, especially if you can bash your head through seven car windows in a row and, and, and be concussion immune, unless maybe yeah. he's not. Yeah, I want that kind of strength, man, but I feel like he's probably going to just, like, feel that an hour later. It's he's like gonna... a delay. <laughs> it's a delayed pain. He's going to be in bad shape. I don't know if he's going to be able to play the game, you know? He's he's really screwed up over that. No, you just juice more steroids in, man. It's okay, man. <laughs> Get another <laughs> needle in the butt? Yeah. But, like, I've... I've never been that excited about anything in my life before than him just making first team defense, man. Seat at the table. Have you Starting ever defense. been that? Ex- have you ever been that excited about anything in your life? I'm excited to tell you that this is episode 88 of the Last Row Podcast. <laughs> we do this little intro every time. Yeah. Now we're gonna like play it that way. But this is episode 88. Coincidentally, Drew, this is a football movie, the program, and 88 is like. Maybe the best number you could be in football. Uh, it's weird. it's hard for me to say that as an Eagles fan because that's a Michael Irvin number. Yeah. And you know, as an Eagles fan, but, you got that anti Cowboys bias. But but it looks good on the jersey. It does. You can't deny it. You can't it deny does. it. It's a great number. It's a great yeah. the double the double number is always yeah. a great number. And eight is the best looking number. Like it that's is. Und- that's undeniable. It's it's got the double. It's just the quadruple <laughs> symmetry there. It's, it's <laughs> tell tell them where to find us. Drew. If you're looking for the website, thelastropodcast dot com. Follow us on Twitter at the Last Row Pod, Facebook dot com, slash the Last Row Pod. Head to Spotify. Hit the subscribe button. Thanks to everybody that left us a five star review on iTunes, Apple Podcast, Pod Chaser. If you're enjoying the show, please consider leaving us a review. Episode eighty eight. Bad way. Eighty eight. We made it. We made it. And we're talking about the program, 1993 sports slash drama slash footballs movie, directed by David Sward. Sward. Or some, Dave Sward. Some call him David S. Ward, Drew. Do you know what <laughs> David S. Ward has been into, Drew? Nothing. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, pff, how dare you? Um, he wrote The Sting, which okay. he, won, he won an Oscar for, 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 did, screen, okay. for screenwriting. That was in, that was in 1973. <laughs> and then he did a couple things and then he did major league all right i'm gonna he, give him that he wrote major league and you know, he knows sports it. yeah then he did he also wrote sleep is in seattle all right so he knows sports and he knows romantic comedies yeah. or, or is that just a dramedy and then uh the last movie he ever directed was down periscope which that's, i think that's an you, underrated I, movie i know you like that movie that's an underrated movie my Who's dad that? rented that that's Kelsey that, uh, Grammer. That's isn't a Kelsey it? Grammer. That's Kelsey my Grammer dad thing, rented yeah. that from West Coast Video back <laughs> in the day. Like uh, I remember vividly watching that movie, I and I like that movie. I don't think I've ever seen it. Is that a full-on spoof movie, or it, is that just a just a ridiculous comedy? It's been a long time. It, it's sort of like it's just a spoof Navy style movie. Like it's, is it it's like not, a Naked Gun type, or is it? No, it, okay, not really. It's less so. It's just yeah. 90s. Uh, it's 90s it's a good movie though. Nineties hijinks. I, I actually I think you would like it. It's a fun yeah. movie. It's it's stupid, I, but it's funny. You know I feel like I'm not in the minority. A lot of people just want to smack Kelsey Grammer. Yeah. Like look at you his get, face. You got, you got <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't I don't yeah. dislike him, but I thought mm-hmm. that movie was good, and maybe that's why. It's, it's yeah. sort of like Mikhail's Navy came out at the same time too, uh-huh. didn't it? It's also got Rob Schneider. So how can you go wrong oh, okay. with that? You know, Dude, I was just this morning watching, like I I've clicked on Judge Dredd. And it was the scene where he's with uh, <laughs> Stallone, and like, yeah. that just reminded me how much I love Rob Schneider. Rob so Schneider is 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 yeah. really stupidly good in these movies, and and as everyone knows that listens to this, you, you're not going to catch me saying that Deuce Bigelow is a bad movie. It's just so a great movie. We got we got to just skip Deuce Bigelow and do do European Gigolo as one of our future episodes. Yeah. It, it, it the movie I've mm-hmm. said it before has no business being as good as it is. It's not it's not any kind of movie you could make yeah. any anymore. But yeah. at the time, it was just. Stupidly I mean, funny. We have to pay respect to any and all silverback he bitches. You know, yeah, exactly. To. But you, you said this guy won an Oscar. He's yes. not winning an Oscar for this movie. Let me just put that out there. No. Well, with an IMDb of 6.5, I 
Too high. That's about right. It's maybe a little too high. Rotten Tomato, 43%. Yeah. Eh, it's about right. It's about right. Metacritic, 51%. It's eh, about it's, right. It's about right. Yeah. It's about We're right. talking about the program, Drew. Several players from different backgrounds try to cope with the pressures of playing football at a major university. Each deals with the pressure differently. Some turn to drinking, some turn to drugs, and some turn to fuh studying. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh i you know there was another tagline that i saw or another synopsis that i saw was more about the coach it's kind of bs because this, this isn't really about the coach this movie's not about the coach and, and i have thoughts on james con just phoning it in worse than yeah. george clooney and batman james con man for, james he con for, man the, he got he got his quote all right he did uh tagline the two mil even though he did a bad job yeah, exactly he got his he <laughs> should get fired from the boosters the boosters of hollywood yeah. Uh, taglines pressure surrounds them competition divides them talent unites them a story of what it takes to survive dot that's dot a, dot that's a good damn tagline that's Drew. probably the best one we've had yeah. since we've been doing these that's, that's a really good, good. one <laughs> a really yeah. good one how about this from different worlds they come to prove themselves in the gritty world of college football too many worlds there's two worlds in that sentence Drew. and for whatever know. reason every word was capitalized which i didn't like that annoyed like me no nope, i didn't like it pass. either Financials, fifteen million dollar budget estimated. Mm. Cumulative worldwide gross, twenty three million. Not very okay. good, is it? No, but you know, we did something. Was this hyped at the time? Because I'm just going to tell you, I never saw this movie until now. I never even heard of it, and I know that it, it's apparently yeah. popular. Well, this is going to segue into our first topic, Drew. It was hyped in a way that it was a it was a low budget. It, I, I don't know when it came out, as far as what month it came out. I'm sure that's easily findable. But I would imagine it came out in a month where, you know, movie releases are slow, like a like a February or a March or something like that. But it got a lot of buzz because of a controversial scene that ended up getting cut from the movie. What from was it? Mid 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 uh, theater run. Oh, they took it out while it was out? Yes. So so it um the the movie came out and then like a week later they it was pushed and the the creators agreed to remove a very controversial scene from the movie that allegedly caused the deaths of certain young people trying to imitate a very dangerous act. So, so you said allegedly it's not proven that this happened? Well, well, let's get into it. So, okay. so the scene in question is, so So the long story short, Joe Kane, the quarterback, is like this uh, risk taker. He's an alcoholic and he's clearly depressed. And he, like, does these death-defying things just to, like, both feel alive and also to, like, prove to his teammates that he's a tough guy that'll do anything, right? Yeah. So after a drunken night at the bar, he kind of, like, hops a guardrail and into, like, a almost like a uh, a highway traffic scenario. It's, like, <laughs> heavy traffic. It was like the train scene, right? Similar. Yeah. So he just, like, lays down, like, on, like, the yellow strip, you know? That's crazy. Like, that separates two lanes. It was like a four-lane highway type deal. Yeah. And he just lays down there, and it's pitch dark. And he's got a leather jacket on. He's not wearing his uh, his uh, his flashers or anything like that, right? So he's just laying down in the street. And then his other teammates, like, as to not look like bitches, apparently, they jump over the guardrail, and they join him. And there's just four dudes just laying on the street while traffic, Dude. like, whizzes by them at 50 60 miles an hour where the hell is coach winters at man yeah man this guy is like get a leash on these kids get the, what the hell so so anyways apparently like this a part like a, a clip of that scene was in the trailer for the movie really so even before the movie was seen like you say oh it's an r-rated movie you know you should be mature enough to like watch this and not get ideas but if it was in the trailer then any kid could see it. You know, you could be eight years old and see this That's thing. true. 12 That's true. years old, 15. You know how dumb 15-year-old kids are that can't handle movies because they don't understand uh, reality from, from fake? Can you imagine if this came out in the TikTok era? You'd have oh, the TikTok man. challenge of yeah, like... Yeah, the challenge, yeah. The <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the highway challenge for Laying sure. on the highway. Right? The highway TikTok, the Joe Kane challenge. So anyways, it has... So apparently a kid died from it. Another one was seriously injured. Uh, separate cases, but and they attributed it to this movie. And then the director did show remorse for the scene, and he, like they were like, "Let's get rid of it." So they had like projectionists 
edit the scene, cut it out, like physically really? cut it out from the from the film. Yeah, across theaters. That's crazy. Um, but then it came out later that it was possible that kids were doing this before the movie came out. It was a thing, uh, not a smart thing, obviously. Well, yeah. And it, and it's just like anything. I don't know. We could debate it or not. Whether or not you know, you know, just because Mortal Kombat shows deaths doesn't mean you're going to go killing people in real life and you know Grand Theft Auto and all that crap. But I don't know. Do you think they should have cut it out? No, do I don't. Was, yeah? I don't. Should I don't. they have edited it? Because it's just another dumb thing. Like it's there's imitatable things in every movie. What about the train scene? They didn't cut that yeah, out. Like yeah. I don't. Right. I think that's stupid. Like that's look, just as dangerous. That's it's clearly just as dangerous. I I get it. Like. You obviously don't want people doing this, no. but you know, to blame it on a movie, in my opinion, is stupid. And like, I don't know, I wasn't around, I guess, looking at this in 93. I wouldn't have never done that. I wouldn't have mm-hmm. done that anyway myself, no. but to blame it yeah. on the movie is kind of stupid to me. Sure. It's a scapegoat. Yeah, definitely. And like David S. Ward, like he like he, he showed remorse just because like he was saying he didn't want his work and his words that he wrote and his scenes to be associated with anybody dying. He felt bad whether or not it was the fault of it or not. He yeah. felt bad. So well, like, I kind of get that. Yeah, I get that too. And yeah. he, and he has, so he has to say that, but at the same time, it does sound sincere, but I would feel the same. Right. But to cut it out of the movie, like, I don't know. I just think that seems re- reactionary in my opinion. Definitely. It just Especially, seems reactionary. That seems like a type of thing that would happen today. Not in the, yes. not in the early nineties. It's surprising. I don't know. It's 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 funny. Like maybe we'll talk more about this as when we get to the Joe Kane section. But why doesn't he have like a cool nickname where they where he has to, he should have like a middle name and they should they should have called him Joe Nova Kane because he's Joe numb Nova. to the world, man. Like he he's got like <laughs> oh man because he's so he's so numb. Like that's his thing, right? Oh, like God. isn't that you his know thing? What? It's perfect, but you know the world doesn't know he's an alcoholic. But he's got to numb himself. Well, like, if he's numb to the pressure, then yeah. yeah. He's, he's numb, numb to the pressure. <laughs> Jeez. Nova, you know, Kane. I, I, Come on. You know, every once in a while, you surprise me with how <laughs> Come on. Much, of, much of a genius you are. <laughs> and that's just... That's I just chef, you, that's chef's kiss. The lives. Yeah. That's, that's chef's kiss right there. I just... No, I, I agree with you, though. Like, I don't think that it should have been cut. I mean, to cut during the theatrical run, like, I could see that being a... Hey, look, you know, we're gonna cut this from the DVD, or we're gonna cut this from the movie, or even the the what was it, what were they making back then? Laser discs. Laser discs. Like yeah. that's that's what they had back in in ninety three yeah. at that time. Uh, I don't know. I just it's interesting. So did it, did it cause more buzz around the movie? Did you did. watch this when it was out? Well, no. Like, I mean, I, I saw it later when it was on like HBO and Cinemax. My my family we had the hot box. So yeah, I probably saw a lot of movies that I shouldn't have seen at the time. Because I was watching R-rated movies un you know unchecked when, when I was I don't know twelve years old. Yeah. Um. This movie came out in ninety three. I was nowhere near the theater when this came out. Obviously, well, sure. I was. I wasn't. My mom was going to come go take me to see the program. Yeah. At a at you, nine year at, at nine the, years old. You, would you even want, have wanted to see this? At no, nine years I mean old? I like, wanted to see Toy Story. I didn't yeah. want to see the program, but like <laughs> you would see Batman Forever. Yeah. But you know, th- three years later, when I'm like twelve, like yes, this is interesting to me. Yeah. Well, you, that's when you get into football, right? I mean, yeah, sure. Let, let's talk about college football in the '90s. So, were you? When did you become a college football fan? Like, oh, dude, let me tell you, I bleed. I bleed that Penn State blue now. But back yeah. in the day, go Hurricanes, baby. Yeah. See, you were you were the the Miami fan. Love the Miami Hurricanes, man. Big, and, and around this time too, right around the early to mid nineties. Yeah. But because you're either, you're either a Hurricanes fan or you're a Seminoles fan in Florida State, then go to hell. Hate them. <laughs> <Hate 'em. laughs> so, but were, but were you really into college football at the time, or were you sort of casual? No, like, it was how, on how the side. Like it, it? it was casual. It was definitely casual, and it was probably not until around like ninety six, ninety seven, yeah. ninety eight. Certainly not ninety three. I was more into the NFL. I yeah. first got into the NFL around 93, but I didn't really care about college until 95, 96. So this movie definitely did not pique my interest until it got on the hot boxes. And and that's why like I've heard, so I've heard and I've, I've read this just in looking at some of the reviews and some of the different, you know, people that have written about the movie online. People have said that, and I, I didn't play football growing up, but they've said that this is a very accurate depiction of football. You know, I obviously didn't play football, didn't play college football either, but the pressures that the guys were dealing with, the boosters, the, the drugs, the, the pressure 
the coaches and all that kind of stuff, like right, the turning the blind eye to things. Mm-hmm. Like people say that this is is one of the more accurate movies yeah. that's out there about football. So let me let me read you a quote real quick. I have a quote from the director himself. Uh, he wrote it as well, the writer slash director, yeah. uh, about what he was trying to do here. So he said, at that particular time, there were a lot of things going on in college football. Players receiving gifts, players using PEDs, just a lot of things swirling around college football that I thought would be interesting. I always wanted to make a college football movie, but I didn't want it to just be about winning the big game. Yeah. Recruiting was part of it. Steroid issue was part of it. There was part of it where players would go to school, get injured, and don't ever come back to play pro football again. He Checked really he, he didn't want to just make Rudy. He wanted to make yeah. like an inside peek into what's really going on. An expose, if you will. I mean, Rudy's the only quote college football movie that I've really seen that I can remember because most of the movies are about the pros. Like you look at any given Sunday, you look at the replacements, you look at uh was it unnecessary mm-hmm. or necessary, necessary, roughness. necessary roughness. Most of these are about, yeah. you know, pro football. So I, I mean mm-hmm. I'm sure there's others, right? Like there's what we are Marshall, there's a bunch of others. Like mm-hmm. I've not really watched a lot of them. But you know yeah. this Titans, was the first uh, time I've ever seen this. Titans, uh, remember the high, Titans, school. high school got, got little Lights, giants. High school. Yeah, the littlest of giants. I, I think there's a lot of like interesting topics just about college football in general. We try not to go too deep into the football world, but like, mm-hmm. you know, this hits on a bunch of different things. So let's talk a little bit about student athletes. You know, we talked a little bit about some of the people in this movie. We'll go through each of them. We'll, we'll talk about some of the major characters. We'll talk about the school itself, but really just the whole student athlete dynamic. You've got the athletes potentially getting paid under the table. You've got the boosters and the NCAA, mm. right? Love Making money off of the students. Love, love the boosters. The sort of scummy nature of that. And then also the kids trying to balance the athletics as well as the school side. Like you saw some of the guys in here were failing their class. I think the one guy who could sit in math zero, Dude, English is zero. These people, they can't even read. And like, I'm not trying to make fun, but it's like. It was a literal thing. What are, like, they, what are they doing in college? I have a question about the boosters. Let's start with the yeah. boosters. Do you know anything about these boosters? Do they make any money off of this, or are they just so rich that they like to see the team win? And they're and like de facto is, owners. Yeah, I like the, my my known my understanding of the boosters is is Buddy Garrity from Friday Night Lights, the TV <laughs> well, show. Yeah, so me too, me too. You know, and, and that's like I don't know as much about the college aspects of it, so I'm going to probably sound like an idiot to everybody listening that knows about it. Well, no, uh, we got we got to discuss what we don't know. So I mean, for me, it. I would I would think. I would think that they they're not making money but they're making money for the school and the mm-hmm. school it's like they're so into the alumni like being alumni of the school that they're bringing money in and they they're rich just, themselves. It just seems so strange to me. It's like to love the school that much. Like to spend so much money on it. Not <laughs> only to just your tuition when you went to school, yeah. but to just keep coming back and giving back to the school. It's like Come on, you gotta man. give, like, man. You, gotta you have give. to give. You, <laughs> you have, have to give. give, but you don't have to give. <laughs> you have, have you ever give. donated? Have you ever donated? You know, you're a graduate of Penn State. Have you ever donated? Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> have you ever because I plan? paid enough money to go yeah, there. Already. Right, exactly. You I've already, already paid overpaid. Enough. We all overpaid Penn yeah. State. We I mean, did this. <laughs> exactly. I did it too. <laughs> I, mean, I know people that do give, but yeah. I d- I don't. Right. I mean, right. And I'm not knocking it, but it's like I feel like I would never. It's just. Yeah, paid, I mean, I, paid, I, don't. I paid too much already. I mean, <laughs> they're good. They're good. They're good. We're good. They're, they're good. I'm they're good. not good yet. They're good. But if everybody said that, then they wouldn't be good, right? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'm not gonna. I, I'm not gonna feel bad about it. No. But I, I mean, so the other the other thing is interesting because because now I mean we're in interesting times, right? Because at the time that this thing came out, students were not allowed to have anything, right? And now no. the times have just changed, like literally just changed so, within the past few months. So uh, so Alvin said in the movie that they get $500 a month, which yeah. is... It's like a stipend, right? That's cool, but like it's not going to get you anywhere. No. I feel like they should get paid, man. Pay them <laughs> kids. Because they're not allowed to have jobs. So, so you know, you could argue, and this is going to get into some deep cuts here, but like the, the value of the scholarship, because mm-hmm. some some would say, I'm not saying me, some yeah. would say that the scholarship is the value because others have to pay to go. Mm-hmm. So that's value in itself, right? Sure, right. So if the scholarship is worth, I don't know, call it call it a hundred thousand dollars, right? Yeah. Say it's a hundred thousand dollars to go for four years yes. at, at Eastern State University. We don't know where this is. Yeah. But is it actually worth a hundred thousand dollars if the person you're giving the the scholarship to doesn't care to take the education that you're giving them. I think that that's, money. I mean, you're right. 
Uh, but that's on them, right? Like that's uh, value is inherently to what well, it is. Well, yeah, but I mean, I could be given a riding mower and not use it because I only have a small <laughs> patch of grass. And you can't, but you could sell that. I guess you can't sell your degree. Let's say, let's say it's, yeah. a, let's say it's not for resale. I don't know. Yeah, I, I just I, I don't feel disagree like you're, with you're, you. You're giving someone something for free, but. To them, all they're all they're trying to do is play. They're just playing football. That's well. All I mean, doing. the one guy clearly even says that. Yeah. Like, the, you know, I forgot was the linebacker's name. Uh, mm-hmm. what was his name Alvin? Alvin, right? So Alvin's yeah. sitting there in in the film room, and he was like spitting off every detail mm-hmm. of the offense. He knew everything. He was a genius. Yeah. When it came a to football, football schemes, a right? football genius. Yeah. Yeah, he was a football genius. And then when it came to school, like he was, he even said it. He got the test ahead of time, so he wasn't even trying, right? Mm-hmm. And and that was that was a legit thing. Uh, you know, I think that this time there was scenes where the boosters were giving the Omar Epps, they gave the guy an envelope full yeah. of money yeah. and he was like really taken aback by it. He's like, we're not allowed to take that. What are we doing? Mm-hmm. You know, how often does this happen? Do you think? Does it happen every day? You think? All the time. All yeah. the time. I it's feel like just, it happens all the time. They just don't and get I'm, caught. And I'm, I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. Yeah. I don't No, I don't think these kids should be making a million dollars or anything like that. Don't get me wrong. But I mean, this is a very, you know, we won't spend too much time on this, but I feel like give the kids something so they can like at least give them some kind of because they're making how much money. Well, the argument is that the NCAA is making a lot of money off of them too, right? Right. So off of them and their likenesses, just give the kids give the kids a a couple hundred bucks, you know? Yeah. On top on top of their scholarship stipend. What about let let the kids take their girlfriend out for for a nice dinner? You know. (laughs) What about the school itself? Let's talk about the school, and and to me one of the weakest names in in fake college history the timberwolves <laughs> you can't you can't name like you can't yeah. give me that name it's a basketball team to me it will for, mm-hmm. forever be a basketball team yeah. like the timberwolves is such an oddly specific animal that right. already exists in a co- in, in a sports setting that you like you said that i agree with you yeah you're exactly right it's just like the nittany lion it's like we talk about penn state right so like the nittany lion is penn state right you yeah. can be the lions that's fine. Uh, you can call 20 other, 50 other sports teams the Lions. But, like, say there's a new uh, NFL team and they start calling themselves the Washington Nittany Lions. Yeah. That would sound ridiculous. Yeah. Because it are, there already is a Nittany Lion, just like there already is a Timberwolf. You can call yourself the Wolves. Yeah. You can be the Red Wolves. You can be the Blue Wolves. It, it, whatever wolf you want to be. Not the Timberwolves. What do you think? Call up UniWatch. What do you think of their their uniforms and their 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 gear? Do you like their style? Like their I, I their mean, helmets were kind of weak to me. I, I don't know, but I'll tell you right now. I mean, you just you show me a picture of that game. I'll tell you that game's from nineteen ninety three. Yeah, like the way the jersey fit, the way and the, like the jersey gigantic fit, gigantic right. shoulder pads, and and the colors, so and the colors, the number patterns. It's like you could just that's a total nineteen ninety three team right there. I liked it. I'm a fan of the maroon and the and the, and the gold. I'm a fan. I'm they should have had. They had sort of like the Boston College colors in a way. Mm-hmm. They they should have done what they should have done was a really cool helmet where the mouth of the wolf was like around the mm. the, the the face mask. The you know, fa- that's silly. That is that could have been really cool silly. to me. They could have done that. Like I like that. I mean, that's come on. Right. Is so is this school any good? Maybe, like, are maybe they the good? Jaguars? Maybe the Jaguars should look into that. Oh, yeah, exactly. They should. No. You said Boston College. This this screamed of Florida State to me. I don't yeah, know why. Yeah, they did have the Florida State colors too. Yeah. I, I think it's supposed to be an SEC school, SEC school yeah. right? So where is what's your what's your guess at where this school is like fictionally in the world? Because we know it's Eastern because it's Eastern State. Yeah. Unless it's like Eastern Texas State, we don't know that. No. But we know it's warm weather because in the very first scene of the game, it was a torrential downpour during. Theoretically, it would have to be a December game. Yeah. So it's not snowing, so we know it's not cold weather. What do you think this is? I know that they literally filmed it in South Carolina at, at the University okay. of South Carolina. So I I okay. assumed I got the impression it was somewhere there, but yeah. the shots of the campus were from Duke. Mm-hmm. But the the campus I've never been to Duke, so I don't know what the campus looks like. But it looked more like a like a New England school to me. It's like sort of weird. I don't know. I don't know. I, I I thought it was Florida. I don't know why. I just thought maybe it was the Florida state of it all. I thought it was in Florida. And it's kind of funny that they never in the movie mentioned like, they don't. where it is. They don't no, say they it don't. at all. Like 
I mean, I guess that's great because they call it Easter, but they had real schools in it, right? There was like Michigan, yeah. I think Iowa was Iowa was in it. Uh, There's yeah. a couple other schools yeah. too, right? You, you can't you can't be uh you know using a real school and having a steroid scandal, sexual yeah. assault scandal, <laughs> cheating scandal. All you know, we can't we can't be unless you make a documentary. It's like <laughs> there's there's enough of that in the real world that we can't have fictional yeah. problems for these schools to be had. Do, do you so do you think this this school is any good at? the program because they open with losing out at the very end of the season. And it made it seem like it was the second time in a row. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I've, this was a once proud franchise that's fallen on hard times. I and mean, has James Conn been the coach the whole time or yeah. uh, James Conn to me seems like a lifer, right? Yeah. I mean, l- let's talk about the problems with the program because under his watch, at least in what we've seen, there's a list of violations here. Now I'm going to go through them and you tell me what you, what you think of some of these. Okay. So just just the first one, the guys are cheating on the tests. His daughter takes a test for the backup quarterback. Mm. Like, is that really worth like losing and getting expelled for the backup quarterback? <laughs> she gets kicked so, out of school, and the coach has to lie to keep the kid in the program. Yeah, and that's the thing. He he lies to keep the kid in the program only after the quarterback, the starting quarterback, gets yes. a DUI. So he's scrambling here, but lets his daughter go sailing in the wind. First of all. If you're the girl that gets cheated, that that cheats for the kid. Yeah. First of all, the the, the backup quarterback, his name is Bobby. So yeah. it's plausible. She's taking the test. Her name is Bobby. What's she doing sitting on the end row, Drew? Yeah, she she did not. Get in the middle. Get in the middle. It's just amateur Blend. hour there. Blend. Just amateur hour. <laughs> like, don't the give the teacher, teacher saw a right reason. Away. Yeah, don't give the teacher a reason. Blend in. Complete amateur hour with, yeah. with that. I, I mean, come on now. Uh, how about the next one? So... Alcohol abuse, like rampant. Joey Novocaine is an alcoholic. <laughs> he's he's got others drinking with him. He gets Novocaine. a DWI. I like to call it DUI, but yeah. they call it a DWI. DWI. And then he gets his his ass shoved in rehab during yeah. the middle of the season in a Heisman run. Dude, let me tell you, this would not only affect his Heisman run this year. It's over. It's over. But like next yeah. year, forget about it. I was gonna ask you that when we get to him. Like, is mm. I'll just ask you now. Is that is it really make it over? Like, there's no shot. A, yeah, he's not gonna win the Heisman having that on him. For Former the alcoholic. Year. Yeah. What? Ninety three. Was him. it more of a big deal? Like, like I don't know. Is he like Johnny Manziel? It seems well, like. Well, these these stories didn't get out as easily back then, obviously, True. because of lack of social media. So when this thing would pop off, I mean, I imagine it would be a huge controversy. It's a big scandal. I yeah, mean, as right. like Heisman winning Heisman runner, like front runner. Imagine right. that. I don't know. Like, do you think this happens like where college kids like can just, they got the campus police for like, a reason, man. For, for example, like we know how old Joe Kane is. He might be 21. He's yeah. probably not though. Cause he's a salt. He's a friend. He's a, he's a, he was he's a, a junior. junior. He's a junior. So, so no, he could be 20. He's, he's like, 20. We, we don't know this. He probably so, like, is. But like he's he's hanging out with Omar Epps, who was it was eighteen years old. Everyone in the world knows this kid's a freshman because yeah. he plays for the team. Like you, you know, me and you go into a bar in college. Nobody knows how old we are, right? Right, right. Because we're just nobodies. Like we're not in the public eye, right? Omar Epps walks into a college bar, doesn't even get ID checked, just yeah. gets served. Like, do do football kids get a pass? Do you I, think that actually I, oh, happens? Yeah, I do. Do you I think do. that actually happens? I mean, I think it depends on where you are, but I think I I think you do. So you go to a Penn State bar this year, whatever the freshman running back is, he just waltzes into a bar May- and gets served? Well, maybe not now because of, like, cameras and stuff, and mm-hmm. then it would be obvious, and it's like... Maybe get, back then? Yeah, maybe back then because okay. nobody had a camera in their pocket, you know? It's like most people have a camera you know, on your yeah, cell phone right, right, now. Right. So it's like, yeah. oh man, this guy's underage drinking. You'd be yeah. on the front page of the newspaper tomorrow, sure. maybe. And then your bar gets shut down. But yeah. yeah. I'm not saying it didn't happen. I'm just genuinely curious yeah. if that if that is the thing. Do like the do the college kids actually like run the campus? Kind of like varsity blues in <laughs> in, in their high school town. No, I believe that's true in those in those Texas towns. In, in the in the high school ones, yeah. it's probably even more yeah. obvious because it's just yeah. less like a you know rules and whatnot there. Mm-hmm. You, no, you said Joey yeah. Joe Joe Kane. I keep calling him Joey now. <laughs> Joe Kane. Joe Kane is is twenty one. He's twenty one, going on forty one to me because he looks oh, like God. he's just like fifty years yeah. old. We'll get oh, into yeah. that later. Hashtag. We'll get into that later. Yeah. Uh, what about Latimer? So he not only commits sexual oh, assault Latimer. or attempted sexual assault, the father of the assaulted drops the charges, so the program isn't shamed. Like talk about messed Man. up, right? So so we got the one coach just 
letting his daughter get expelled, but yeah. the equally guilty football player keeps his, his scholarship. And then in this case, we have a sexual assault case where the father yep. ignores that just so the there is no black eye. Yeah. And they go, the father's not uh, happy about this, but it had to be done. It had to be done. Did it have to be done? Did it? That this guy, this, it wasn't a star. I mean, it was his first year of being good. Yeah. So this 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 whole booster thing, it really just makes my skin crawl. Yeah. Because it's, it makes it's me, creepy. It makes me think that this could be a real possibility. Oh, I'm sure it is. You know, what if, about, he's, if he's spending real money, like, and we're talking big money yeah. to like help the school, quote unquote. And then I'm sure he'd be willing to throw his family on yeah. the bus for it as well. Yeah. What about the steroid usage? So then you got the steroid usage and they faked an injury so that he didn't get investigated. Mm-hmm. So the school yep. didn't get investigated, right? Classic, classic, classic sweep under the rug. Classic yeah. sweep under the rug. This has to happen everywhere. I, I have to I have to say this is not a an Eastern state problem. I feel like yeah. this is a, a worldwide problem. Well, then you got the bar fights. They get covered up. And then just the overall illegal booster payments to the players. And, and this, yeah. Not even a problem. I, that's fine. <laughs> it's whatever, right? Let well, well let, let's transition into Coach Sam Winters, plays by James Kahn, because he's the one that's supposed to be in charge of this whole program, the it's program. To, the he's, program. He's in charge. You know, first, I have some issues with his performance. Yeah, can I we think, talk about James Kahn and not Coach Winters first? Yeah, James Kahn, yeah. He, like, I don't know. I know he's in The Godfather. I know he's, like, a very famous actor, but I looked at what he was in around this time, and it like it wasn't. It was like, eh, whatever. There, there's a spot in a lot of like actors' careers where they start dipping in the slums a little bit. Yeah, right. To get <laughs> is that paychecks, what this is? To pay to get paychecks, and I think this is the part of James Conn's career where prestige is out the window. Yeah, <laughs> and he's just he's just he's just doing a job, man. He's just doing a job. He did. He phoned it in, man. I yeah. joked about it, but he, he yeah. was up there with Clooney to me. Like, I was, yeah. like, offended by his performance. Yeah. I'm like, come on, and, man. Try a little harder. But you know what, though? Like, he didn't detract from the movie, but he most definitely didn't add to it. No, he didn't add at all. Like you, He was he was barely trying. And listen, as somebody who's, who's never even knew this movie existed before you told me about it, mm. I feel like, you know, can we just get somebody better? Like, can we? Because, you know, we Who's used to better? do more recasts, but I have some names for you, and you're going to, I'm going to rattle some off, and you tell me. All right, rapid if, reaction. If I took one of these people, would the movie be better or worse? And, and you know, if you want to comment on it, go ahead, but I'll, I'll go through them as quick as I can. Harrison Ford, Too better old. or worse? Too old. He would, he would phone it in more than, <laughs> would, more than Conway. Yeah. You're you not going to see him in this kind of movie. He's not going to try in a football movie. Yeah. <laughs> Clint Eastwood. He would, he would do pretty well. <laughs> I don't know if Clint Eastwood likes football though. He doesn't he, seem like the type. I don't know that he likes anything. He just he seems like yeah. a cranky old man. Yeah. He likes making yeah. movies about like America. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah, he doesn't seem like the type that cares much about sports. Yeah. I, don't know. I could be wrong on that, but what about Michael Douglas himself? Michael the, uh, <laughs> from our previous from our episode, previous Basic episode. Instinct. <laughs> I don't know, man. He's uh. I think he's too busy with the ladies. You get the you wear the deep V neck. There, there's no there's no opportunity for a love scene yeah. in this movie, so Michael Douglas would pass. Do they make a deep V Eastern State <laughs> a shirt that he could yeah. wear? Yeah, he'd have to wear like a, yeah, another deep V sweater. How right? about Tommy Lee Jones? That's interesting. I could see it because because you know think about I was trying to find like. What do you even type for 1993? Is it like 40 and 50 year old actors? Like, how do you yeah. even do a Google search yeah, it has, for this? Yeah, it's, it's like, it's a hard search. Yeah. But like, but it would be more believable to me if this were in Texas. If yeah. it's Tommy Lee Jones, Tommy Lee Jones? we got to set it in Texas. I, but, I, but, we're, but we're good to go. I think Billy Bob's too young at this time, right? 93? Yeah. And I know he did the movie for Friday Night Lights. So what about uh, Jack Nicholson? Probably too famous at the time. He was not in his career lull yet at the time. Yeah. It was coming, but it's not yet. I, he the, probably wouldn't like football. I don't know. I don't know that he's a football fan. Mm-hmm. He, he's a basketball fan, but what about uh, De Niro? Too good. Come too, on. Good. <laughs> too good. He just made Goodfellas. They can't afford me? that. At this time? What he's, about... He, he's probably filming Goodfellas as we yeah. speak. <laughs> but what about... Gonna... I, got, I got a couple other guys here, too. I, this one's my personal favorite, Joe yeah. Pesci. <laughs> <laughs> Are, are you just taking the cast of Goodfellas yes, and running I have through Ray and to, see, to see if they fit? Just yeah. to see if they fit? Yeah. 
I mean, Joe Pesci would be the most hilarious choice, <laughs> yes. Give me those keys. Give me those <laughs> keys. You can't be in the middle of the season. You're driving a freaking motorcycle. It would be amazing. This about- kid's running for a high speed driving motorcycles. <laughs> <laughs> what, year, what year was my cousin Vinny? Was it 91? Like, uh, just, I don't know. I, I, have, I usually that know That could these. fit anywhere. I, it kind of looks 80s to me. It looks it? like 89. I don't know. Ish? Or 91. I don't know. We have to look it up. Now I'm what curious about Leota? What about Ray Leota? Ray Leota? No. Like, <laughs> I like him. I think he'd be good. To me, Ray Leota, by the way, my cousin Vinny, 1992. 92. Oh, I was yeah. off. So it is a 90s movie. Yeah. Ray Liotta, no. I can't even, like, articulate why <laughs> He's that it's a dirty not cop Ray Liotta. He kind of falls to me in the Clint Eastwood category yeah. of, like, he, like, what does he even do? Like, what does he like? <laughs> he likes to play cops, I guess, right? I That's feel like, like he's an odd-looking guy. Like, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I hate to say that he's, like, he's almost pervy-looking to me. <laughs> and, to, like, for him to... For him to be in like a normal nine nine to five job, like a like a football coach, it doesn't seem like something he'd be interested in. Yeah, am I off base by saying that? For me, <laughs> right? Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? I do. It's the eyes. Like he Just, has it's, that. It's his like, eyes. It's the has, eyes. You know, some people have kind eyes. Yeah. Some people have pervy eyes. I yeah. Think, I think He's Ray got, has pervy eyes. He has questionable eyes. <laughs> Like, so. like you don't know like there's no opportunity for him yeah. like yeah he's he's turning the blind eye to legal mm-hmm. booster payments and stuff but he mm-hmm. can't commit a crime himself in this no. you know what about um al pacino it's obvious oh. right like to to yeah. su- any given I mean, sunday he, he, he did it like i don't know eight nine years later yeah how but about like yeah totally could be great gary oldman too old man too british too british man <laughs> not gonna happen last one bruce willis Bruce Willis as a football coach would be interesting. I could that would be interesting to me. I feel like he'd be a good high school football yeah, coach, I don't but know not a college this, one. I don't know if this movie would be it, but like, yeah, a football movie where he's the coach would interest me. Like to you, this day, if you took if you took the Friday Night Lights and, and put him as the coach in a high school team, I think he'd be good at it. You know what? That's not a bad call. That is not a bad. I, call. I think he would be good at that. Yeah. What about? Well, let's talk about Winters. Sam Winters. James Gunn. Do you think this guy is a good coach? No. <laughs> I don't know. Like, we don't like, know how long his record. He's, yeah, we don't know. We know that he missed the bowl game the last two years. That's not good. Yeah. To me, he seems like the type of coach that's been there a long time. Yeah. You know, like he's a lifer, like maybe a 20 plus a year guy. Is this his first job? Like, has he been coaching this place this long? I feel like, yeah, I feel like he's been brought up here. This might be a 15, 20 year guy. And it might be one of those things where it's like, it's a rough patch. And maybe he didn't have as much success as some of the other lifers, like a Joe Paterno or like a Bo uh, Beckler. Beckler or, yeah. or, you know what I mean? Like a Bob Stoops or whatever, yeah. whoever it may be, where it's it's possible that he could get fired for, for three bad seasons in a row. Well, they got the, the boosters on his ass, man. They, yeah. they, they're they telling him, like, we're going to, basically, you better make this bowl or Dude, we're going to get rid of you. They, they, they had a... They had a, what do you call it? A hanging in effigy? Is that what they yeah, call it? That was pretty messed that, up. That was on the goalpost after the one loss? It's like, dude. It's pretty oof. bad. Yeah. Pretty bad. I mean, so does the, he even like his job at this point? Like, he looks, you know, we talk about James Conn phoning but, in. Is it the most genius performance? Because yeah, I he's don't know. In? I don't know if it's him not acting or <laughs> him just acting like he doesn't care anymore. I don't know. <laughs> Like, it's hard to tell. He, he deserves an an Oscar because he acted like a football coach who yeah. phoned it in. <laughs> like, like, give this guy the Oscar, I mean, you know? He's gi- he's given the press like snarky answers left and right. He clearly like doesn't that. give a shit about the about, the, like about the press. I don't know. He's at his wit's end with all these players. It seems like he doesn't understand today's youth. <laughs> it might just be a transition for him that he just doesn't <laughs> understand kids these days. You know? He does seem like an old crotchety man. Yeah. That just doesn't care yeah. anymore. And I just, I don't know. I always wondered, like, because they didn't give you much background about him. Was he successful or was he not? You mm-hmm. think he was. You're under the the impression that he was. And yeah. now now the now the franchise is on hard times. What do you think about him dealing with these boosters and recruiting? Because he, he definitely, like you mentioned it, right? He had it with the media. He mm-hmm. seems like he's had it with these guys, too. So he's turning the blind eye. Well, And they show yeah. him, like, begrudgingly doing these things. Like, his yeah. daughter got expelled from school. Right. So all the indiscretions that he like not so much actively plays into, but passively and clearly turning the blind eye. Yeah. 
he seems to not be okay with it, but also seems to understand, okay, I guess I have to do this. Yeah. So I guess that's a clue that he cares is that he's trying these to like, let, let, let things slide for the betterment of the, of the team's record. He, he clear he clearly cares about our next guy, Joe Nova Kane here. Oh, Joe Nova Kane. It's like a son. Like a son it is like a son to him. And, you know, obviously dealing with the alcoholism a la Johnny Manziel here, you know, it's like a weird, not to name a specific person, but that's like the equivalent of that of what I get yeah. here. It's so like yeah, you, got some yeah, problems, was, talented yeah. player. We're thinking Kerry Collins, Johnny Manziel. That's who Joe Kane is. I mean, if you're a football fan, like that's that's what we're doing here. What do you think of this dude's just overall look and style? What do you think of dude, the actor? I mean, performance? If, if he if he were the villain of the movie, he would score very highly on the <laughs> style portion of the villain scale. He has like the Sons of Anarchy like <laughs> sunglass look from '93. Yeah, he's got like the chib sunglasses. So weird. Yeah, and he's got, and he's got the the leather the leather jacket. You know, the jeans, the the boots that are almost high heels. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, the literal yeah. heel boots. Oh yeah. I, this guy looks. I have a very specific thing that I'm going to say. Person, this group of people that this guy looks like. He mm-hmm. looks like Dorian. <laughs> From the mask when he's Dorian, wearing the mask, Dorian Tyrell masked up, <laughs> masked up Dorian Tyrell from the mask, Jim Carrey the mask, plus Rocky from Mask with Cher, plus Josh Brolin. Like he has oh, like the, the wide face of yeah. Josh Brolin. Like he looks, he just has a very weird. What, what's going on with his forehead, Drew? Yeah, <laughs> a lot going on there. I told you he's twenty one, going on fifty one. Yeah. Like he just looks way too All old right. for college in this so. way. I'm going to look this up. He was born in, wait for it, 1960, <laughs> which means he was 32 when they filmed <laughs> this. Is he? Did he have like one year of eligibility left? Like, must have. <laughs> he went to school. At- <laughs> I mean, he must have pulled a Scott Bakula from Necessary Roughness. He had to. <laughs> oh Shout out Scott God. Bakula. Great name. Great oh name in history. Oh my God. We don't talk about Scott Bakula enough. Here, no, he, he's an underrated, you know, quantum leap man there. Yeah. I mean, is this guy smart? He rides a motorcycle like he play. He plays all kinds of sports that could endanger him. This guy's trying to go pro. If I was there, I'd be only doing the football type training that I needed. You're going to like he's he's driving off of cliffs yeah, with man. his motorcycle with his girl. Come Wasn't on, even now. his girlfriend at the time. It was technically their first date. <laughs> yeah, their exactly. First date. And he tricked her too. Like he tricked her. And it worked, Drew. She fell for him. What'd you think when he was doing all those crazy tricks like on the gravel? Well, yeah, he's got a death wish. He's got a death wish. And you know what really like really freaked me out more so than the jump was the little swerves he was yeah, doing. I don't like that. Yeah, I don't like that at all. Like uh, like if I'm like playing a video game even yeah. and I start to like swerve a little bit on the it's dirt put road. That bike down. I like overcompensate so hard and I'll end up crashing to the wall. Like that would have <laughs> been it. I would have been in the quarry. Game over. But no. He's clearly has like I don't know, is death wish the right word? Death wish, I guess. I mean I he's clearly depressed and it's sad and he's got a mental issue. But like they can't you can't diagnose it in nineteen ninety three. Yeah. Well you gotta toughen up at that point. Yeah. Tough yeah. it up, deal with mm-hmm. it, right? I mean right. so he's he's front runner for the Heisman bid going against I forgot the guy's name, but it was the Mich- Michigan quarterback. And something they had a way duel. Yeah, something what, way because Chris Chris, Chris, Ber- Chris Berman had a really terrible joke. Yeah. I was surprised. So you know, again, I saw this movie and I watched it on two B T V. So there was a couple things about this that really stood out to me was it looked like a TV movie. Maybe mm. it's because I was watching it on Tubi TV with some ads, like random ads. Yeah. But also the amount of cursing in this movie really threw me off because it looked like an after school like yeah. special. The commercial made it seem like you're watching it on USA or something. Yes. And we then when I expected the curses to be bleeped. Yeah. And then when I saw Chris Berman show, I'm like, I guess this movie had a pretty big budget. Like I know Omar, Omar Epps was like a big actor back then. James Conn is like a big actor. Mm-hmm. But honestly, this movie flew under the radar for me. Yeah. So, so this guy, he's the front runner in the Heisman bid. In the Heisman bid, the school's pushing this. Like, what do you think of the portrayal of that? Because it's it's it was an interesting <laughs> angle. Yeah, I've never thought of it before, and I bet this happens in real life where a, a player's Heisman run is like corporately manufactured by the school, where they coach him on what to say to the media and how to present yourself and what they, you know, how it's mutually beneficial financially for the school and for your draft stock 
and they make it sound like yeah. they're doing you a favor, but in reality, you're doing them a huge favor. They made him redo the interview. I mean, yeah, they had to redo the interview. Cardboard the button, stand up of him. The button Kane is able. Oh, yeah, geez. that's the, the yeah. worst thing I've ever heard in my life. It's, yeah. it's the worst. Should have went with Nova Kane instead. It's better. Nova Kane. <laughs> he's numb to it. Yeah. He, he doesn't crumble under the pressure. Yeah. And he's clearly got some edge to it, so like it fits. Yeah. It they should have went with that. Yeah. Cool, you know, numb as Nova Kane. Yeah. Like they should have done that. What about, you know, we got to bust it out. The bad father barometer here. Oh, man. It's always a bad father. If it's a sports movie, there's a bad father lurking somewhere in the weeds. I might be wrong on this, but I feel like I heard in the movie that his dad played college ball also, but was a I, failure. I missed that part. He played college ball, but was a failure. So that might be the reason why he just doesn't show up for his He son's said his games. dad didn't like football or something, and I didn't know why. I knew the other girl's dad, uh, Halle Berry's dad did, for sure. He passively said that to that girl, I think, to like not it. to not open up. Yeah. Like in that scene where he's he's drinking right before he goes to like almost get by the train. Yeah. She even says it to him, like, you brought me out here to talk and you're not saying anything. So like he's clearly trying to avoid his real feelings. So I think he it was just a BS excuse, so he doesn't like football. I don't know. I don't know why he doesn't show up. But no, the real the reality is, and we've seen this before with the Duns, is where from Summer Catch, where it's a family of quote unquote losers. And it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy that I'm a loser, so my son must also be a loser. Yeah. I'm not going to support his football dreams because it's just going to end up in the toilet just like mine was. So that's what's going on here. Maybe and that is like... Alcoholic too. Yeah. And it's textbook bad father <laughs> action. You always want your, your, your son or daughter to do better than you, right? Yeah. You that's dream your for dream. your daughter to one day do better than you, right? Exactly. You don't want them to be like lesser than you or well i'm a big failure so you're gonna be one too <laughs> that's like the worst thing you could you could like have for your it's kids awful. right it's yeah. awful so this guy's on like a lowest one of the lowest levels of bad fathers is, sure. is this guy like the purest of bad fathers that we've seen because you think about it like he's an alcoholic i think is his mom around his mom died right or did they I say i don't know if the mom's dead or not i can't recall they didn't really show this guy but he didn't show up to any of his games ever he's never seen him play he said I you know isn't that weird because think about how good you have to be to get to that level to mm-hmm. be a Heisman front runner. Normally, you would think your parents are pushing you in some degree to get yeah. to that level. Just imagine the, the 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 high school push to get recruited, you know, for yeah. the scholarship. Right, like right, this right. guy wasn't involved at all. Yeah, it's just weird to me. That's like even worse of a and father. Out as wild as Joe Kane was in college, imagine him in high school with like no supervision. Yeah. It's like I'm surprised he's still alive. And that's the thing. And, and then yeah. the other thing is when he invites his, his dad to the to the game at the very end when they're playing to try to get into mm-hmm. the to the bowl bid. Yeah. They gave him the tickets. He's like, you know, Dad, I got you this plane ticket. I want you to come out. I, I got you 50-yard line seats. I thought he was going to show up. I did. No, man. That dad's not going to get but on I the didn't plane. But I didn't know what kind of movie this was, and this movie did not have happy endings. Between no. him and the linebacker, Alvin, it's just... I, I, it was very real, I it's guess. It's the realism you know? of, like, if the dad is that much of a piece of shit, he's not like, going to change He's not going to finally, like, show up at the last moment. Yeah. And that, it fits the Joe Kane character. And I feel yeah. like, I feel like it's like a healing moment for Joe to where it's like, all right, I can finally, like, he's got, clearly has father issues and family issues. It's like, all right, if I can't count on him, that's the end of it. Yeah. I'm going to push him out of my life. He's going to go on to get drafted, you know? So right. he's going to make a lot of money. And the dad's going to regret it, but maybe the dad is, you know, the dad's too far gone to care, I guess. What'd you think of his relationship with Christy Swanson? Uh, I feel like it was tacked on just to like, as like, maybe her is as like a a vessel for us to like yell at Joe. Like, come on, Joe, what are you doing? For screwing up, that kind of thing. She didn't have a whole lot of depth. I was entertained by the, you know, by the tennis scene and her kicking his ass in tennis. Yeah. But I don't know. She didn't really do much, right? I think you're right. Like, I think they put her in just to be that, the audience, where it's yeah. like you kind of, you're supposed to feel for this guy, and she's yeah. feeling for him. She was trying to make like, him, you yeah. know, better. She was the representation of, like, his hope of, like, what, yeah. you know, if he can turn it around, like, she'll be a part of it. And she had the support, right? Like, mm-hmm. so she had her family support and all that kind yeah. of stuff. So it's like, that's what he could be if he had the family. Yeah. But she, he had to overcome the adversity of that. And I, I guess that was real. 
So, yeah. all right, Drew. Before we move on from um, from Joe Kane, I do have a little bit of trivia and tidbits on him. Kind of a window into his soul here. Not 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 as the character, but as the actor himself, the Craig actor. Sheffer. Yeah. So first of all, the director and writer Ward wanted Johnny Depp for the role, which is interesting because that like, is he, interesting. He fits the age model, right? And like Johnny Depp was like fresh out of Jump, Twenty One Jump Street. So I can't picture Johnny Depp throwing no. a football, Drew. He's he's too much of a pretty boy. Yeah, like the star power makes sense. Like it's clear that Johnny Depp had star power blooming, and it would have been a better acting choice than what they settled on in this Craig Sheffer yeah. kid, or kid I should say, young, yeah. you know, thirty two, thirty one year old man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Johnny Johnny Depp turned it down because he wasn't a football guy and he wasn't a sports guy, and it was probably the right decision for him. I would have believed Johnny yeah. Depp as his character yeah. more. This yeah, guy was but, not good. But Johnny Depp could probably act like he liked football. And yeah. that would have made the movie that much better because <laughs> he's a great actor, right? Exactly. And then Shefford um, gets into this, this BS story about how he got cast because he threw the football 65 yards <laughs> during an audition. Which I serious? think is complete and utter bullshit. What is he, there Uncle are Rico? pro quarterbacks that <laughs> yeah, he threw football over the mountains, Drew. There are pro quarterbacks that can't throw the ball 65 yards, and he's talking like, yeah, okay, buddy. Ridiculous. So that got me to that got me to question this guy. And then the director in response to not 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 direct response to that, but later on talking about this actor's uh football ability, he said, and I quote, Craig very badly wanted to really run all the plays himself rather than have the stand-in. Most of the time we had the stand-in, and he was a South Carolina quarterback. Uh, throwing because he was incredibly accurate and he looked like a passer. Craig's he was throwing literally motion, a passer. <laughs> yeah, Craig's throw motion was a little wonky. <laughs> so, so he told him, "Okay, Craig, I'll let you run a few plays over here." And then he said, "The one time he let him run a play, he barely got touched, but came out of it with a neck injury and had a neck brace <laughs> on for three days afterwards." I like imagine the insurance fraud neck brace. <laughs> yeah. Like- <laughs> <laughs> the guy wanted to run plays. He lets him run a play and he barely gets touched and still gets hurt. I knew I knew it was not him because I it was so obvious they were like cutting to a different guy's yeah. face. Like I was like, that guy cannot throw the ball. This guy's Uncle Rico yeah. over here. Come on. And then like and this is all from like an oral history of the movie. And then Sheffer later says, Oh yeah, I took some big hits. Some of it's on the film. I got upended for a 360. And it's like I, I bet that didn't happen. Crap. I bet he's full of crap, man. And what put it over the top of this guy is a this is, is a freaking liar in life. Fraud. Fraud. Is that he talks about this story about how he was up for the role of Oscar Schindler. <laughs> like for Schindler's Neeson? list. <laughs> over Liam Neeson. <laughs> this guy talks about how he was up for Oscar Schindler. Like the lead of Schindler's list group. <laughs> like what when he says up for it, like it was he you know, you go to a job interview and you're like, yeah. you know, they do final round. It's like one of two people. Or was he just, he auditioned for it? Yeah. Like, what, what's so, the story? So he said that Spielberg was supposed to fly down to like where they were shooting okay. the program okay, to buddy. screen test them. But it just so happened that the head of Warner Brothers died. So Spielberg couldn't come that day. That sounds like so, an entourage story. Yeah. So then he said he went down to the set of Jurassic Park. And they screen tested him at Jurassic Park. And he played the role a little bit different than Liam Neeson. He said Liam played him straight heroic, but I played him as a as a dark person who was trying to trick the Germans. Very clever <laughs> and undercutting, but still being on the other side. Who's this guy, Daniel Day Lewis? So he's trying to say that he played a more interesting version of Oscar <laughs> Schindler than Liam Neeson did in his stress test screening. Like uh, Liam Neeson in that movie nailed it. Like you, yeah. you, you couldn't. I couldn't imagine anyone else in that movie. And then Ridiculous. he says, we, and then he says, weeks later, he was in the bathtub after a long day of shooting the program, and he got a call from Spielberg, mm-hmm. and he was, and Spielberg, and he was on the phone with him for an hour, and Spielberg described how he wanted to choose shit, uh, Liam Neeson as Oscar Schindler, and it he took an hour to tell him that. Yeah. Come on now. I'm pretty sure that Steven Spielberg talked with this kid for an hour. Yeah. It was probably okay, Steven buddy. Spielberg's assistant. Okay, buddy. Yep. Like, I don't want to call what anybody do you think about out, that? but yeah. I think it's a BS story. Yeah. Like, and you're right. What, what lends you to understand that is the, the way that he talked about throwing the football and getting hit and the director yeah. calling him out mm-hmm. saying that. Nah, nah. Yeah. 
The guy, that's not, oh, true. not None of this adds up, Drew. And I don't like to bash people. We're not in the business of bashing people on yeah. this podcast, but it smells a little fishy. There is what I say. This guy's a fucking liar. Yeah, he's he's a, he's a liar. I I don't believe yeah. that that is true at all. Yeah. This guy's full of shit. Especially based on the way that the other stuff went down, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Sure. If you look at this guy's IMDb, it's like he wasn't even in Turbulence, Drew. He was in Turbulence Two. Tur- he didn't make <laughs> Turbulence One. <laughs> yeah, Tremor Seven. Yeah, which stars our boy Ray Liotta. <laughs> yeah, Ray Liotta. <laughs> Turbulence. <laughs> well, you look at his IMDb; it's a bunch of bullshit. Yeah, this guy was, and and he was in A River Runs Through It with Brad Pitt. So, like, I, I've never seen it. Yeah, but I know Lightning, it's supposed to be. Lightning good. doesn't strike twice, kid. You're not yeah. gonna get. In, you're not gonna be Oscar Schindler. He's too like he's too old for for this guy yeah. Joe Kane, yeah. but he's too young for Oscar Schindler. He's like, gonna be play thirty two years old. Come on, buddy. it doesn't make Come sense. On, buddy. No way. All, All right, right. Let's, let's, let's move let's, on from this pathological liar. This, the charlatan. Let's, yeah. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Dar- Darnell Jefferson, played by the the always awesome Omar Epps. Yeah. What do you think of of this guy? Oh, oh my like, god. I like I, this character. Can I can I give you a love fest real quick for Omar yeah. Epps? Because at this time, it's Omar Epps was the man to me. He was the man. I mean, Juice, then Program came out, then he was William Mace Hayes in Major League Two, Great Higher role. Learning. Like, the urban drama is, like, up my wheel, up my wheelhouse. I love the urban drama. Um, First Time Felon, which is an underrated movie that I bet not a lot of people have seen, but it's totally a great movie. Omar Epps could do no wrong in the 90s to me. Yeah. I liked so, him. Yeah. I thought he was really good in this. Yeah. He was he might have been the best actor in the movie. Like, he really. played he played the character well too because yeah. he had he had the adversity that he was dealing with where he mm. was sort of like dealing with the the fact that he didn't really know who his parents were, right? You were saying that before. Mm-hmm. He had this weird relationship, this love triangle with Halle Berry's character. Oh yeah. And the yeah, starting the, tailback on starting the Starting tailback, med student, terrifically dressed yep. business cash, Ray yeah. Griffin. <laughs> Dude, the guy looked like he was in a country club. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. It's like a four- that guy looked like he was 42. He? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, he looked like a grown man. Yeah. About Darnell Jefferson, the football player, who does he remind you of? Like, what's what's his what's his pro comp? I, I want to, like, maybe it's because it's the 90s, but I want to say, like, Ricky Waters, but, like, a smaller mm. version of him. Like, he had Ricky Waters' uh, confidence, yes. I would say, for sure. He had the swag of yeah. Ricky Waters. Mm-hmm. Play style reminds me of Marshall Falk a little bit. He can catch out of the backfield. You know, he's yeah. shifty. You know, he's got the jukes. He's got the spin moves. And some might call him a homeless man's Barry Sanders. You know? <laughs> you know? It's not a knock either. I mean, no. being a homeless man's Barry Sanders is still pretty good. Yeah. Because Marshall Falk is a poor man's Barry Sanders. Yeah, that's which true. Would make, which would make Darnell Jefferson a poor man's Barry Sanders. Exactly. Well, I, I mean, I don't want to spend too much time on this guy. Like, he, he was a big part of the movie. Yeah. But... Well, can we just talk know. about the love triangle for a yeah, second? I mean, that's, I think that's, that's really what we need that's, to. The, that's the biggest you know, factor here. What did you think about him just immediately swooping in to try to steal Harry Halle Berry away from Ray Griffin? It didn't seem out of character based on how he was. Right, he had the swag, he had the confidence. Yeah, he came in. I thought it was probably a violation, but you know well, they did recruit him with her, and she kissed. That's him. That's right. That's right. She they she the kissed school him. used her to recruit him, and she well she hesitated, but she didn't push him away exactly. yeah i mean yeah she was she in on, on this though was she in on the recruiting like it seemed like she did yeah. but she didn't seem to care about football. like she wasn't gonna do him or anything like that but <laughs> i feel like she probably has a role in the school to like help you know with recruiting well like yeah. she's a, like she's the person that will take you on a tour of the school she knows the school well you know yeah. she's a great senior you know as, as a fair enough yeah but so she was like mad at the time. At the, she she revealed she was mad at the time because her uh, her boyfriend, the starting tailback, she cheated, um, cheated, right? cheated on her, right? Yeah. So, but still a little slimy to like play the, both sides of the fence, right? It was. Because she's she's still on his on his shoulder, or she's on his shoulder. I don't know how, however you say it. I'm never gonna be cool with cheating. Like it's just not cool. Mm-hmm. So like just break yeah. up with the guy and yeah. then move on. Like it's just it's to me it's that simple. Mm-hmm. I know that like, it's obviously not that simple, but she, it is. Is she slumming it with him a little bit? I think or, she was. Or is there because... genuine interest? Because she's mad at her boyfriend who is, like you said, like this country club, pre-med, yep. you know, top student athlete, also great, great student. And then maybe she just, does she want the complete opposite of that? 
I think I think she wants to see what's on yeah. the other side of that fence. Like yeah, she this, wants to see the opposite, yeah, right? This poor freshman who's a great football player but can, you know, not to make fun of the guy, can barely read. Yeah. You know? Well, it's like, I don't know, you go back to sort of like a Van Wilder situation where it's like the Tara Reed's character, she's dating the like the very successful like D-bag guy mm-hmm. and then she likes Van Wilder who's like that screw up sort of, you know, slacker kind of person. Yeah. And I think Omar Epps' character in this is like it's almost like a charity case. She wants to yeah. help him too, and, and she's then, a, she's a tutor. Yeah, she slowly starts to fall for him while to- tooting. Yeah, well, tooting, tooting, <laughs> tutoring, tutoring, tutoring. So one of the the funny like throwaway things <laughs> from this movie that I've always remembered was was Omar Epps's like vocabulary. Yeah, him using big words. Yeah, <laughs> he uses the big words in front of her. She yells at him for sounding stupid. Do you know what uh, loquacious means? I, I don't actually. I don't, I don't either. It sounds fancy. Did you get a, did you look it up? Let's see. Loquacious. Loquacious. Let's see. There's loquacious. There's commiserate, mendacious, pejorative. And he goes, oh, you know, I like to, I like to look up a word in the dictionary every day so I could use it. I just looked up loquacious. Tending to talk a great deal. Talkative. Never loquacious. Sarah was now totally lost for words. <laughs> there you go. I don't know the others. But I did look that one up. But yeah, but I I love that stupid that stupid side bit. Uh, like I feel like he had the best character in the movie. You know? He he was also the best actor in my opinion. Yeah. Like he he acted circles around everybody else. He was oh, good. Yeah. Mm. He I like the character. I like I like the player too. Like yeah. I think he was cocky, uh, but I don't think he was he wasn't a jerk. I really don't yeah, think he was a jerk. No, he was just confident. And I like, liked him for as you know for as deep of a character as Joe Kane was, and he was, but he just wasn't played well. Like the yeah. actor kind of failed a little bit. That like opened the door for Omar Epps to be the best character in the movie, even though he wasn't the main character. Do you but, think like, he, he, be the he deepest? Sh- do you think he should have started right away? Was he was he that good? I you can't just like take the job away from the senior incumbent if he's you know if he didn't give a reason to right. Yeah. Well, and, and they, the, we talk about the fumbleitis thing. He fumbled one time in practice, and they made it out to yeah. be like you know he was Tiki Barber pre figuring out how to hold yeah. the ball. Yeah, yeah. It was one play. Yeah, then he got to hold the ball in class, and if anybody takes the ball away from him while he's in class or on campus, he said uh, he would. The coach said like he'll wish he was never born, which I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what he would have him do. It's, but, it's pretty bad, yeah. isn't it? Like I don't yeah. even want to know what that is. I don't know. No, but you see it all the time in college sports. I feel it's like you got a hot shot freshman. He doesn't start right away. Yeah, but like if you can't deny him. You have to use him more and more him. as the season rolls on. They needed him. So I think that that played out rather realistically. Yeah, they needed him. So where by, by the end of the movie, he was the starter. They moved Griffin to fullback. And the fullback hated it at first, but then grew to accept it. What about Alvin Mack? We'll talk about a couple of these Dude, really quick here. Alvin but Mack. The, the linebacker. He was one of my favorite guys in the movie. I liked him. Yeah, he's a great that guy guy. Like he's in a lot of things. He's in uh, Ghost of Mars. He's in Little Big League. He was in Under Siege. He's in a lot of that things. That guy from that thing, man. A lot of, uh, that guy from that thing. A classic. Dude, the saddest thing I've ever seen in, in cinema history was him listening to the game on the radio after his devastating injury and like just like clicking it off when yeah. it was over. Like He didn't celebrate. They won the game. His he career's it, over, he just man. just clicked it off, and then his mother came and kissed him on the forehead. Dude. It was like the saddest thing I've ever seen in my life. Felt it, so bad. It's, I mean, what, first off, what's with everybody only having radios in this movie? It's 1993, <laughs> not yeah. 1943. Yeah. Like, what the that. hell is it? Like, yeah. no one had a TV here. There, and yeah. college football was on TV in 93. Like, oh, yeah. I know it was because I watched it. Big time. <laughs> like, what the hell were they doing? Yeah. <laughs> they only had a radio. Him, yeah. the, the what's it, Christy Swanson's character. Everyone's mm. listening to the game on the radio. Yeah, for real. No, yeah, like, this is... It's your classic case of like the cautionary tale of like the stud football player who did not give a shit about his education and honestly might not have even belonged in the school based on his level of education. Yeah. If, if we're setting a bar for entrance. Right. That they hold most other people to non football players or non athletes. And he was banking on go to the NFL and he has that devastating injury where his leg basically got turned backwards, which it was pretty gruesome. In 19, you might come back to that now. But in 1993, there's no coming back from that. Yeah, you're done. that's like the Alex Smith injury, man. Yeah. It's like yeah. you're not you're not coming back from that. I mean, 
So should he have left school early and declared for the draft? Hell yeah. No, I don't know how often that was happening in the in the early 90s where um, everyone stayed to their senior season. I feel like there were some juniors that left early. And like, yeah. based on his family situation, like he was adamant that he was going to buy his mom a house. You know, they were showing him living in poor conditions. His, his, his house looked pretty poor. So like, this would be your classic case of, hey man, as soon as you get that first round grade, you go for it. Yeah. No yeah. need to mess around college. Like clearly he doesn't care about being in college. Like he's not taking the classes seriously. So what's what the point about, of graduating? What about Latimer? Let's let's talk about him because he's the other interesting guy. You heard him in the opening yeah. clip. This guy's my favorite guy in the movie, besides the assault part. Everybody's favorite guy. Is clearly he's Bill Romanowski, right? Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> he's unhinged. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't know. The 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 whole piece about him using steroids. So I don't I want to know, I'm not a steroid, you know, enthusiast here, as we, <laughs> as, we, as we say. I don't know much about them. I mean, I know that they make you work out, like you can work out more, you can recover faster and all that yeah. stuff, right? But it's like, can you actually gain 30, like the coach even says that, can you gain 35 pounds of muscle if you work out every day, even with steroids? Yeah, I feel like you could. I don't know. I feel like the steroids help because you can, you can work out more. 35 pounds of muscle, I yeah. don't know. It's, the guy, this guy is like one of the... Like he gave Arnold like a, a run for his money here. When I look at this dude, he was so oh, jacked. Man. It was ridiculous. Yeah. The dude, he looks like a wrestler. And he he's actually juiced up. He's actually Zangief uh, from Street yeah. Fighter. If you remember the triumphant of return of, of Zangief. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. And he was like a uh, backup player who used the juice to, to try to crack teams. the starting lineup. But yeah. like, does, does steroids make you a better football player? No, or, I don't think like, so. Does it make you stronger? Like, I guess it does in that you can work out harder with with recovery time. Yeah, but like, I mean, I, like... I, stero- I, I mean, there's steroids and there's HGH. I mean, there's two different things. Well, we don't know what he was doing. We yeah. knew he was shooting up for sure. Like, he, they showed was, there was a scene where his bare ass was being shot up. And yeah. they showed the butt crack, too. Like, did you think that was necessary? It's a crack? tad unnecessary. Like, they, did, the butt they, they, got, <laughs> they just gave him a little bit of a different angle. Yeah. You know, like... Just show the side of the cheek, yep. not the the whole crack, but just you know, a, just a tad unnecessary for the ladies, yeah. I guess. For the ladies, well, at least they didn't show dong hanging when he was yeah. doing the test. So, <laughs> so yeah, like dude, I was imagining him having one of those prosthetic, uh, you know, like junks where they they do that dude, with the pee that, in it. Uh, that Vinny Chase did, yeah, in like season eight of the <laughs> <laughs> Entourage, the prosthetic dong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, but like I have a couple of questions about this, about about P tests and and just in general. I, what do you, you think know, I'm a P test uh, aficionado? Well, <laughs> I mean I've had to take a P test for you know you get a job you get to take yeah. a P test. Yeah. But I've never faked a P test here. Mm-hmm. I'm not implying that you have either. Yeah. But I just I have questions about this. So he faked a P test in a couple of ways. The one was he had oh, a very yeah. carefully placed vial of urine in the toilet paper roll. Oh. Like, that's that's like that's like plan A, right? That's like the the best way to do it. The easiest way. That was a way. professional plant too. It's like great. that was not that looked like it had been used by others. Yeah. Like you know that that chamber isn't there because what, he cut it there. What if the school sets that up? They might have. It was yeah. there for the school. Yeah. Now Jim James Con did not see like he did not feel like he was okay with that. Like he didn't mm-hmm. like it. And the coaches were like, no, no, we can't, we can't, we can't do this, right? Like he wanted to suspend him, but he couldn't. So that's one way that he fakes the pee. Mm-hmm. The other way <laughs> is he basically does a reverse Monroe transfer. And <laughs> a, a, he does a pee Monroe transfer and he sticks uh, a catheter up his, up his, you know. A liquid Monroe. His pee hole. And yeah. he's shooting, I'm assuming that's somebody else's pee up his pee yeah. hole. Whose pee is that? Like, like, where do you get the pee? Who's your pee guy? And you how do you pee guy? And how do you, and how do you make sure that the pee is cl- like it's clean pee? But is it well, clean pee? You if know the I mean? person's providing the pee, you would think that they want to like have return visits and, and other paydays, uh, repeat yeah. business. So yeah. you, you, that person's going to be honest with their cleanliness. Is it like pee. the Gavin Belson, the Blood Boy? You know, it's yeah. like yeah, it's your Blood Boy. Who's your pee guy? <laughs> Who's your pee guy? <laughs> and how do you find a pee guy? Yeah. And and what is what is the pee cost? Like, is he paying or is somebody donating the pee because I, they want the team to be I'll, good, I'll just like say, the boosters? I'll say this. If I were in school and I was a struggling student, yeah. 
I would sell my pee. You would? Labor. I would sell it. And I would I would sell it for $150. Per, per pee? Per pee. <laughs> Is per it ounce. Per, per ounce? ounce? <laughs> <laughs> That's like gold, man. Yeah. Liquid gold. Yeah. No, no, 100, 150 per vial. Yeah, I'll say. But per, but how painful is that too? Like he's sitting there with a towel over himself, and they're like they're like needling <laughs> Dude, it in. Like what if what if it was a live transfer? <laughs> where there's a dude on one side of the room the... he pees peeing into the tube <laughs> and it's like going live in, into latimer's pee it's got to be fresh yeah it's got to be fresh yeah. you know you, you can't have it sit out you gotta have it fresh <laughs> yeah. source to source you know yeah it's right. like, i mean could you get sick from that like I feel imagine like could, that i feel like you could die from that like i just feel like that's all kinds of problems waiting to happen so, like and then like what time did this transfer happen like what if he like got the transfer and then he like really had to take a piss yeah before you, you the test that. before the test that's you gotta can't be waste like it. yeah well, well the agony. other thing is too you know when you're doing the pee in your own bladder your body's still producing urine so isn't it still going to be drugs like he, he has to pee that immediately because if he doesn't yeah i mean yeah i'm think no about uh, it. i'm no peeologist drew but <laughs> you're, i think you're right you're <laughs> You're the toxins, the toxins are still in there. Think about they? that because his yeah. kidneys are still filtering out the HGH yeah. and whatever else junk he's doing. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on now. You're right. I, you yeah. know what? That's. I think you just cracked it. I mean, the other thing is, does he really even need these steroids? Like you said, it is it going to make him better? I don't know. Like I don't know. And he stops taking steroids for like a hot minute, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden he can't make a tackle. Maybe it's not the strength thing. Maybe it's the edge. You know, because like he's a like mental? a psychopath. When like he's getting pumped up, yeah, maybe he needs the 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 mental edge and like the what the steroids do to his mood. The mood might be more than his actual muscles. I I did think that his roid rage was like comically Jesse Spano. I mean, this yeah. is in the same oh, yeah. Bell era. This is a this is an after school special type of scenario. It, it's totally like a PSA because yeah, it was comical like how he mm-hmm. raged. Like yeah. between bashing his heads into the cars, like, between assaulting the girl, like no. just all over the place. The, the 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 funniest part was when he was lifting the weights and he like yeah. was having spasms, yeah, and like grunting uncontrollably after lifting what looked like a thousand pounds over. His I head. like how to he was off the juice, then he went on the juice. And like immediately just started doing curls. And he was yeah. like, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Now like I can work out. Stream. Yeah, now I can work out. Right. <laughs> like it was like a heroin <laughs> shot. Like, come on yeah. now. Like he was just instantly like, oh, yeah. Like he's just doing curls right away. Yeah. It was ridiculous. I agree. So I don't know. We're going to have to try these sometimes. See how see how, how it makes you feel. <laughs> I mean, like like we, like we I said in the beginning, you know, I just want to be excited about something. Yeah. As, as excited <laughs> as he was. I, I don't I don't know if there's any anybody else to talk about. I mean, there's like a couple of these other guys. There's, there's the guys. fullback that we talked about. There's Bud Light Kaminsky, who's like he's, the offensive lineman, I guess. Is that what he yeah. was? Oh well. Yeah, he's just you know had to be a good guy, best friend to Joe Kane. But and then he didn't there's really the the backup Bobby Collins. Yeah, we already wasn't spoke good about at him. All. He got, he got cut. kicked out. Got it. Got the got the coach's daughter kicked out, but nothing nothing else to him. I'm yeah, more he, I'm just more interested in what happens after this movie, yeah. right? Because and and we before we talk about this, nothing really happens. I mean, yeah, they go, I guess they go to the bowl or whatever. Mm-hmm. You don't really know much, but yeah. I'm more curious about like what happens after this. I'm going to yeah. go down some of these lists and you tell me what you think happens with this. So start with start with Coach Winters, James Conn. What what do you think happens after this? He's on his he's on the hot seat. Does this save his job? So, I feel like the team loses the bowl game right yeah because i think latimer's done so latimer's done we know alvin alvin mack is done they're definitely losing to usc or whoever they play the next year joe kane's senior year hot out of the hot out of the can and five and oh start but then they start of a losing streak end up six and five <laughs> then they lose the las vegas bowl to utah <laughs> state 45 to three and coach con coach winters james con gets fired it's it's funny because you know before the show it's like I was trying to remember because now there's a bowl for everything. Back then they did have a lot of crappy bowls too. I mean yep. there, there was a bunch of weirdos and and the Las Vegas bowl is pretty much the worst you can get back then, right? The, I mean, the weirdest the weirdest bowl that always sticks out of my mind from like the two thousands is the Insight dot com bowl. <laughs> I don't know why that just it's always like stuck in my brain. Website. Yeah, the Insight dot com bowl, GoDaddy dot com bowl. Yeah. It's like the random <laughs> website advertisement yeah. talk about like corporate, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. What about uh, Joe Kane? Oh, so Joe Kane. I mean, clearly he's he's uh, he's a Johnny Manziel type of guy. So he plays his senior year. 
uh, initially in the Heisman race just because his play demanded it, even though we knew that his off-the-field shenanigans was not going to win Even with the, the alcoholism, yeah. they, they allowed it? Yeah. Anyway, he, he looks to get drafted in the first round. I mean, he's a first-round talent, no doubt about it, just like Johnny Manziel was. But then he relapses. And uh, clearly, uh, Christy Swanson, his girlfriend, does not stick with him through the pro process process because she sees the writing on the wall. Yeah. He's going to get drafted, but he hasn't really changed his ways. He ditches the six-pack of Sprite at the end for beers, and he just tumbles down. And that's self-fulfilling prophecy of yeah. the loser Canes, I believe. I, I, I don't see this guy not – I mean, I hate to be pessimistic, but no. I don't see this guy staying clean. I just don't. Yeah. His father might be a bad father, but it doesn't mean that he's not right. It's true. <laughs> what about Alvin Mack? He, so he busted up his leg. He was sitting oh, with his, his mom's Alvin house. Mack. Poor I mean, guy. We have to have a happy ending for Alvin Mack because I can't live in a world where this guy is just like listening yeah. to the radio games. <laughs> so I Depressing, feel man. I feel like the coach gets him a job on the team. Yeah. Coach, coach uh, Winters gets him a job, <laughs> l- lower entry level, get his foot wet, see if he can handle it. Anyway, Coach Coach Winters lasts just two years, as we said, and gets canned, and hopefully the new regime. M- maintains the legend that is Alex Mack. Alex Al- Alex Mack? <laughs> Alex Mack. Alex Mack. It's going to turn into a puddle. Alvin Mack. <laughs> Alvin Mack. Yeah. Oh my god. Coach Winters. What a what a football name there. Yeah. Uh what about Darnell? Darnell Jefferson clearly is a star, right? Yeah. He's going all the way. So team's holding him back. Yeah. He's going to be eating up the yards and TDs. Starting job, starting sophomore year. And he's actually going to win the Heisman once Coach Winters gets fired. He does seem like a Heisman winner, yeah. doesn't he? So Joe Joe King graduates, Khan gets fired, and then we're going to have a run first offense here. And yeah. we're going to we're going to we're going to pound the rock, and we're going to give this kid the ball, and he's going to get two thousand yards, thirty touchdowns, Heisman winner. If they were smart, that's what they would do. Yeah, you know, yeah. base the to... offense around Darnell. What about Latimer? Oh, Latimer. So Latimer is off the team after this game. So I think he goes into the draft early because he did have a senior year to go. Yeah. So he's going into the draft as a junior. I think he's going to get drafted maybe second round, maybe third round. Probably a bit of a, a of a of a combine warrior, you know. We're Eagles fans. The word the name Mike Mamula comes to mind. Who we met in person. Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. Got a picture? Sure. Oh yeah. We met him. Nice guy. Oh yeah. Totally nice guy. And then he's just a total bust. Just doesn't work out. <laughs> he's all, his on the field struggles are obvious that like he was just juicing before the combine. And then then his uh his sexual assault scandal comes out yeah. from college. And then it's just pro teams don't have time for that. Nothing happens there. No, it's over. It's it's done. It's yeah. done. Fifty cars, man. What yeah, what about Bud Light Kaminsky? Bud Light Kaminsky's not much to him. I mean, he's just obviously a great lineman. Like a Hank little Fraley. bit of a yeah, he gets a little bit under underrated in the draft, drafted in the third round by the Buffalo Bills, and then he goes on to have a 14, 15 <laughs> year playing career. You're cre- you're, you're creative with this, yeah. So this is all like this movie was begging for a before the credits. You know, you get the text yeah. of like this guy went on to do this, this with guy the, went on to do the that. Pause. They have them like yeah. doing something. We this is what we have to do. I mean, we have to do it for them because they didn't do it. They were lazy. It is disappointing that they didn't put that in there. Yeah. What about Ray Griffin? Ray Griffin, I mean, the fullback thing really killed him. So he's <laughs> not getting drafted. He's confidence. not getting drafted. Undrafted free agent of the New York Jets gets cut after the fourth preseason game. Like he almost <laughs> made it. He almost made it. Right? He survived the first two rounds of cuts. Did he make the practice squad? <laughs> no practice squad. And then he goes and pursues his medical career. He has a family practice. That's right. He was going to be a doctor. Yep. He's still practicing today, but he always considers his girl, Halle Berry, Autumn, the one that got away. That's his biggest regret. That's a biggest regret. Not making the NFL, but messing things up with Autumn. Does she wind up with Darnell? I should have asked you that. No. That wasn't going to last either. No. No, she graduates and it's over. Yeah, that's what I figured. She's on to bigger and better things. Yeah. Not that there's... I mean, I think it might have even been an amicable split. I don't think they fought or anything. I just feel like she's graduating. She's going to live her life. He's going to have his own life. Both are destined for success, and they go their separate ways. So before we wrap this up, let me ask you, 
we talked a little bit about other football movies in the beginning. Where do you, where do you hold this? So this movie is something that you've obviously seen quite a bit growing up. Yes. Where does this one fit in the pantheon of the other movies that we talked about, like the Any Given Sundays, the Replacements, oh, the Necessary okay. Roughness, the Longest Yard, those type of movies? Where do, where do you rank this? So this is tough because this could have been the greatest, but it, I just feel like it was acted poorly, and I yes. think you would agree with that. Oh, uh, 100%. Right? So it, it loses a lot of points. I don't. I couldn't even tell you what my favorite football movie is. It's hard because... I would I would split it between any given Sunday and the replacements. I love the replacements. And movie. you still have to consider Little Giants as well. Yeah. I agree. I mean, not just as a family movie, but just as a movie in general. It's just so well done. I love Friday Night Lights too. Yeah. I think that's an awesome movie. But I'm probably gonna go with Varsity Blues as my favorite. Yeah. I that, feel like it's I feel movie. like it's I feel like it's undeniable for me. That I could rewatch that movie every day. So w- would you say that Varsity Blues is is an updated version of this? Well, it's it's the it's the it's the you know the prisoners running the asylum, if you will, right? Yeah. It's like the kids running the town, much like the kids in this school run the college. They get to do whatever they want. It's a more it's campy. Yeah, uh, Varsity Blues is more. Um, I don't know. Obviously, it's partial comedy. Sure. The subject matter isn't as serious. Yeah. I feel like they could have made a more gritty varsity blues if they wanted to, and it also would have worked a lot better than the program did. Yeah. I mean, I I never so I never saw this, as I said. This is the first time I watched it. Mm-hmm. You know, for me, it, it was okay. Like I enjoyed it, yeah. but I don't think I would it I, doesn't doesn't hold up for me because I never saw it yeah, growing up. I think that's a fair assessment because this being your first viewing, I I probably only have that fondness for it just because I've seen it. Yeah, you know, growing up in the '90s and seeing it before I was probably supposed to see it, you know, age-wise. So there was like a um, a danger factor to it or whatever that maybe I maybe I held it up on this pedestal that it didn't really need. And then now, as I see it for nostalgia factor, I'm like, oh yeah, I really used to love this. Uh, and don't get me wrong, I didn't think it was a bad movie. I just think no, it could have been better. To your it's point, it's not. It's just it. Yeah. Had you replaced, you know, the actor, James Caan with Joe Pesci, yep. give me maybe Johnny Depp instead of, <laughs> give me John, Johnny Depp. I don't know, this guy's riding his motorcycle. I don't, you know, it's in the middle of the season. This guy, you're trying to get me fired. Yeah. You're trying to get the team fired. You're trying, you're trying to lose ball game. I'll say to this do your too. Job. Johnny Depp on a motorcycle would have looked a lot cooler than this guy <laughs> on a motorcycle. This guy yeah. just looked like, you look like Clay Morrow, honestly. Yeah, right. He just look, I don't know. He just didn't look cool to me. Just too old and for the shit. I think, you know, I think you put Johnny Depp on here, but yeah, I, I'm curious if anyone else has seen this movie. Is this the first time you guys have seen it? It was on Tubi, but I think it's also on Hulu when I looked it up. I'm not sure. Um, it's definitely worth watching, I think, if you've never seen it. It was entertaining. Especially I just if you're a think it was fan, different. It's a, it's a no-brainer to yeah. watch it if you're a football if, fan. If you like football movies or you're a football fan, I mean, it's football season right now starting up. That's why we did this movie. Check it out. Let us know what you think. Send us an email, thelastrowpodcast at gmail.com. Leave us a comment on the page, thelastrowpodcast.com. Send us a tweet at thelastrowpod, Facebook, Instagram. Head to Spotify, hit the subscribe button, Apple Podcasts. If you're enjoying the show, please consider leaving us a five-star review. Thanks to everybody that left one so far. And we'll see you guys in two weeks on Thursday, September 30th. Hopefully I got that date right. (laughs) And on that note, (laughs) we'll see you guys later. See ya! See ya! So... I never told anybody about my invention, the pee pipe. Oh, you know? no. <laughs> you know, you're talking about football, right? It's, yeah. You're tailgating. If you really have to go and there's nowhere to go, yeah. don't you want to just go? No. You, know, you sit like, so it's the reverse of what this guy did. You stick a thing on and you, it's for guys, right? It's not for women. Because I don't know how that would work logistically. But yeah. you have a little hose that goes down your pants. And it just the, the piece of the hose sticks out of your the end of your pants. Do you do you want to live in a world of pee? Yeah. True. Well, but it's if you're in a field, you know, animals pee in a field, right? You know, I almost got into a fight at the Eagles parade. You were standing <laughs> right next to me because a guy pissed right on my well, foot. Well, and, and actually, we were in a world of pee in there. Yeah. Like I'm sure that we were in so total like pee. And his his dick was out for the world <laughs> to see. So if he were to be able to discreetly pee on my foot, then I just have this mystery <laughs> pee on my foot. 
he gets away with it, and I don't, I don't kick him out of the circle. So would it be better? Happened. Would it be better if there was a plug on the end, and it was just like a bladder that was like you wear against you? You know, you so still the, have the the hose. If there's no good, you can't. <laughs> I don't want to advocate public urination. But if it doesn't come out of the bladder, if it doesn't come out, you just oh, if it's it. stored, then you just have like a bag of pee <laughs> on your person at all times. But do you want that? It's a catheter <laughs> bag. That's <laughs> gross, man. I don't want that. It's warm. <laughs> hey, man. You you go tailgating in the cold, maybe you like it. Oh man, I feel like I'd rather. <laughs>